On BBC Two now, here's Derek Malcolm to introduce this week's Film Club. Good evening. Welcome back to the Film Club. Tonight we're going to have the temerity to show you, in its rarely seen complete form, one of the most expensive failures in the history of post-war Hollywood. But wait, don't turn your set off, because Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate is eminently worth seeing. A flawed masterpiece which may have sunk a studio and been generally reviled, especially by those who have not seen it complete, but which shows Cimino to be a quite exceptional director. It's an extraordinary thing that Stephen Back's final cut about the making of the film, which is now out in paperback, has probably been read by more people than actually saw the film. Back was, at the time of Heaven's Gate, senior vice president and head of worldwide productions for United Artists. And his book is considered the definitive lowdown on how a film budgeted at seven and a half million dollars ended up costing 36 million and being held up the length and breadth of America as a generic term for disaster, for mismanagement, miscalculation, and ego run rampant. It's well worth reading, but it still doesn't explain just why Heaven's Gate, despite all those terrible reviews and empty cinemas, came to be praised and admired by so many European critics. It's an epic western that attempts to say as much about America and Americans as any other film made during this decade. Many of us in Britain find the major set pieces, like the opening Harvard University graduation scene, have the choreographic brilliance and carefully orchestrated panache that not only make for visual splendor, but also give meaning to the story. And what is the story? A well-to-do Easterner, played by Chris Christopherson, sees himself performing a useful service in protecting the poor and exploited immigrants from Eastern Europe who have made their home in America. Becoming a marshal of Johnson County in Wyoming, he learns that a cattle baron, played by Sam Waterston, is preparing to wage war on the thieves and anarchists among the immigrants. It's a war the marshal has to fight on the immigrant's side. Philip French, the British critic, wrote a book about Westerns in which he divided them into democratic and republican films. And this is undoubtedly a democratic Western, though not without its internal tensions. Heaven's Gate seems to have a fundamental faith in America while asking us to inspect its history more closely, to understand the terrible things that were done in the name of early capitalism. Like Cimino's earlier and very successful film, The Deer Hunter, it's both a peon to patriotism and a strong criticism. And the interrelation of these two viewpoints is what makes the film so fascinating. People have compared Cimino's films with those of von Stroheim, the European director who went to Hollywood and whose own grandiose follies, coupled with Hollywood's duplicity, eventually destroyed him. But happily, Cimino was not destroyed by the costly failure of Heaven's Gate at the American box office, though he's hardly a beloved figure in Hollywood now and still blamed for causing so great a financial disaster. Heaven's Gate was undoubtedly a hideously undisciplined luxury in its making, which was the fault as much of United Artists as of Michael Cimino. But now the dust has settled, it's possible to see it in a different light, as a vast, uneven, but really rather glorious epic which told Americans what a lot of them didn't want to know about their own history. The story is at least based on historical truth. The Johnson County Wars did happen, and many immigrants were slaughtered by the rich cattlemen of the area. And the film, warts and all, is an astonishing experience. It also has, I should warn you, some very violent scenes and strong language. We will, by the way, be having a short interval halfway through. Make yourself some strong coffee.